Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to create your own asset tracking tags with barcodes. In just a moment, you'll see the specific products and equipment I'll be using in this video. But this tutorial will help you create your own asset tags with any Avery Permatrack sheet label product. You should also know that one of the great things about Permatrack sheets is laser printer compatibility. They're compatible with a wide range of desktop laser printers, including monochrome and color models. Basically, chances are, if you already have a laser printer, you're good to go. Now, here's the specifics on what I'll be using today. Avery Permatrack printable metallic asset tags. A color laser printer. A USB barcode scanner and an Avery industrial account. You'll also need a list of ID numbers that will be encoded in the barcodes. You can add ID numbers into our barcode generator in three different ways. Number one, using data merge to pull the ID numbers you already have from an existing database. Number two, you can create a serialized list of new ID numbers from scratch. Number three, you can manually enter ID numbers one by one. Today, I'll be creating barcode asset tags using the data merge feature. For help with other methods, you can always call our excellent customer service team or visit Avery Industrial online for more resources. If you're following along and not already logged into your Avery Industrial account, go ahead and pause to do so. I have my login saved here so I can quickly get to work. I'm already logged into my account, so I'm going to navigate to Avery Design and Print using the Software and Templates dropdown. Then I'll click Start Designing, where I can pick the template that matches the asset tag labels I'm going to print on. Here, I enter the SKU number of the asset tags I'm using to find the matching template. If you're using a different size or shape than I'm using here, just check the top of the label sheet for the SKU number you need. Then I click the matching template and click Select Template. Now I can choose a design to modify. As you can see, there's a lot of choices here, but I'm going to go with a simple layout. I can click Select this design or Customize to move on to the next step. Before I go any further, I'm going to print a barcode test page to make sure I'm using the best size for my scanner to read. To get there, I click on More for additional options from this toolbar here. Then the QR barcodes icon and the link to print a sample barcode page. A PDF test file will automatically download. I'm just going to print this out on regular paper. This is my test page. As you can see, it has multiple barcodes of various sizes. The size is indicated in X dimension or XDIM as well as inches. XDIM is a measurement specific to barcodes and we cover it more thoroughly in our barcode frequently asked questions article. You can click the link here to go check it out or get the link in our description below. For now, just think of XDIM as kind of like resolution on an image. And you can't just drag the corners of a barcode image to make it bigger or smaller. When you do that, you run the risk of distorting the XDIM and causing scan errors. My test sheet here takes out the guesswork. My asset tag labels are two inches wide, so it looks like the second barcode size on this list is the one I want. And that works. So now I'm all set. It shows me here that the best X stem for this size is 10. Now I'm ready to move on to the next step. Back in the editor on Avery Design and Print, I'm ready to update the company name, add graphics, and add any other info that I want applied to my asset tags. First, I'm going to make sure Edit All is selected in the Navigator pane because I want these changes to be applied to all my asset tags. All I'm doing here is typing my company name. Now I'm going to upload a company logo right from my desktop by clicking the image tile. Add image, computer, and finally browse for file. In the editor, I can arrange the elements as much as I need to until I'm happy with the design. I'll adjust again after I've created barcodes. Click the icon for QR and barcodes, then click add barcode or QR code. A window will open asking how you're going to provide data. Select Spreadsheet or Sequential Number, then click Next. Under Step 1, make sure Spreadsheet is selected, then click Import Data. This will open a new window that will give you several options for uploading your file. I've got mine right on my desktop, so I'll make sure Computer is selected, then click Browse for File, 
and select From Your Computer. Once a file is chosen, a new window will open showing a preview of the data. There are instructions here to choose what information is printed on your barcode. For the purpose of asset tracking, you want your barcodes to represent your ID numbers. So here I'm unchecking my header row and all the columns except for ID numbers. Then next to move on to the next step. Now there's this box which represents my data and I drag it up here to the field for entering alphanumeric and special characters. This is also the first place I can enter an XDIM. The default here is 10, so I'm good. But if I had picked a different size on my test sheet, I would change the XDIM to match it. When I click this refresh button here, I'll see a sample of a single barcode for my list. Looks good, so I'm gonna click Finish. Back to the editor screen where I can see that my barcodes have been created and applied to all my asset tag labels. I'm gonna make a few adjustments now until I'm happy with my final layout, making sure that I have Edit All selected. Just moving my barcode over and now that I'm looking at it, I don't need the logo and company name. So I'm gonna delete this element and reposition my barcode again. If I wanted to resize my barcode at this point, there's no need to risk distorting my XDIM. I just click on the barcode and this section lets me change both the XDIM and barcode size. I can click edit barcodes to make more changes, but I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click preview and print. Here's a preview of my asset tag labels. I have 60 barcodes, so there's two sheets here. And I have the option to print myself or use Avery WePrint services. Once I click print it yourself, I have some options to change the field direction or selecting specific labels to print, but that's not really necessary for this project. Instead, once I've clicked get PDF to print and open it, I'm gonna show you some setting tips for printing your asset tags. If you open the print settings here in your browser, it should look just like this. If you open the file from your computer or any other device, your screen might look a little different. To start out, we recommend printing just one sheet of your project, just in case. So I'm choosing to print just page one. Then I'm moving down to more settings to set the scale. This is key for aligning your print file and blank labels perfectly. I click custom, then make sure it's set at 100. If you've opened the file from your computer or device, your settings might give you a scaling option for actual size or something similar instead. And you can go ahead and click that. As long as you don't click fit to page, you should be good to go. Now I'm gonna show you one more pro tip. I go down here to the system dialog, which opens up my printer settings, then click preferences. And under paper, choose other type from the dropdown. This should open another dropdown with a ton of choices. Look for the label setting, and if there isn't one, cardstock also works. Click okay, and then print. These look perfect. Just to be sure, I'm scanning my barcodes to check that the ID numbers match when I scan them. Great, they're all good. Taking extra care with your print preferences should ensure your labels come out perfectly. But if you had trouble setting print preferences or your first sheet of asset tags came out wrong, the print has skewed or scans don't work, don't worry. Our customer service reps are more than happy to troubleshoot with you and fix the problem. You can call or email anytime or visit us online to live chat during regular business hours. Otherwise, it's time to print the rest of your asset tags. To do that, I'm going to go back to my PDF file and print the rest of the pages. Choosing just page two since my whole project was only two pages. But let's say I had 10 pages. I just type in 2-10 here. Now I click print and here comes the rest of my asset tags. And there you are. Custom durable metallic asset tags printed right from my desktop laser printer. Can't beat that for convenience. If you still have questions this video didn't solve, check out the description for helpful links, give our customer service a call, or click the link on screen for other informational resources. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials, frequently asked questions, and demo videos.